What is material design? Um, you'll probably have to ask me this a couple times. So material design is a, is a system for designing interfaces. Designing, designing. Material design is a design language. Material design is a design system. Material design is a new perspective on what the human and device relationship can be. Maybe it's, maybe it's too complex of an idea. Material design is this design philosophy that's really trying to acknowledge the technology behind the interface. It's a way for designers to collaborate with users. Material design is a way for designers to get what they want. <laughs> Well, the overarching impetus was really just a bunch of designers wanting to make things better. A lot of this happened organically as, as designers across the company sought to find ways to collaborate. We realized it wasn't just an Android story or just a Google story, but it could be really a cross-platform design framework story. The current way of doing things was, uh, was clashing in all kinds of ways because we hadn't been thoughtful about the physics of it. Why don't we take that and run with that a little bit and see if we could figure out you know, what is this made of? What, what is the material that our software is made of? John came up with the idea of what he described as quantum paper in order to create these, these rich tactile user interfaces. And that idea of it being mostly paper-like, but smart paper served as a point of view about how your surfaces work and why. There's a very, very clear parallel between the systems of book design and the way that humans also hold and use devices. People use materials in life every day, and we want them to understand software in the same way. When we're thinking about how a, a digital service works, think about all the different shortcomings and advantages it has. Um, one of the main things that we run into is that you have this sort of flat plate of glass, which is great because you can, it's easy to move around, but it also prevents you from actually being able to touch the things that you're working with. Inside this device, there is actually a little bit of space. And so we thought, well, let's try and take advantage of that and create a meaningful structure that goes underneath it, almost like the skeleton filling out this body from the inside out. Material design early on was almost like we were going out and trying experiments. Yeah, it was totally an experiment. Everyone kind of sat next to each other in a room working on all the different aspects and components together. Kind of riffing off of each other. It's one thing to play by yourself. It's another thing to play in a group where you're improvising real time. I think a lot of us are used to working more practically. This was the first time where we were being pushed and told, don't worry about that. Let's just see what happens now. Yeah, so this is, this is something that we've done a, a few times. We've set up these light rigs to understand how the shadows work. The depth cues that come from the shadows really made us think more deeply about how do we communicate surface. We built a system that enforces that the light comes in at 45 degree angles. That helps keep the shadows consistent from the top to the bottom of the screen. You know, even as we were designing out the icons, we started to see some really interesting subtleties you wouldn't normally notice, but these are things we pick up on and help us to understand that it's a surface. The strips are spacers measured out to scale to the way that they're modeled digitally, so not just X and Y, but also in Z. The floating action button, the fab, the way that we said, there's just one thing, stop with your five buttons, your four buttons, make the call. I thought that was great. And it was not an idea that I was comfortable with at first. A button sounds like such a simple concept. Though when we kind of took it down to its basics of, well, it's this area on screen that lets a user perform an action. It's this very concentrated thing that should make the user feel powerful and like they're able to complete something. There were little things like having buttons that depressed felt a little bit odd because they're not actually depressing. Your finger doesn't feel anything moving down. And in fact, this like millimeter layer of glass between you and, and the actual image means that you're not even getting to it in the first place. So instead we reversed it. So we had buttons that lifted up when you touched them. So it was more of a magnetic attraction of your finger. There's a logic to it, but also magic in it. Past the motion, there was the graphic design aspect. 
the boldness, the typography, the imagery, those were all intended to give the system a bit more robustness. You wanted people to feel comfortable with it, but we wanted it to feel very well designed. We created this color spectrum around picking sort of a primary color and then using an accent color, creating this really simplified and easy to use system while being very definitive. Someone who never took a color theory class could create a combination of colors within their product that felt harmonious. I design fonts and one of the things that I really like about that is the font doesn't come to life until another person uses it. And we really see Roboto as a living typeface that you know, as, as needs change and as we introduce new form factors, as we need it to do more things, we can continue to revise it, continue to update it. I think a challenge for material design will actually be the designer's tool set having to evolve as fast as technologies and the platforms evolve. To constantly be reevaluating itself and to constantly be thinking about um, what's no longer relevant, what did we think was universal but turned out to be a fad, or simply the wrong emphasis. What I love is when people take sort of the basic principles of material design and then they take them in a new direction. Now that we publish the material design specs, I'm really excited about the fact that we can go and engage other designers in conversation outside of Google. One of the things I wanted for third parties was for them to take this foundation and build greater design upon it. The same is true for us internally. I don't want to be looking four years down the road, ten years down the road, and saying, well, material design, all those ideas, those frameworks, they're over. The principles behind them, I think, should be timeless. And maybe we don't have them right yet, but I believe we'll get there.